Welcome to my Abyssos the Sixth Circle Guide. This fight pits you against Hegemony, who likes to mix things up later in the fight. The difficulty of this fight is not getting tunnel vision on one mechanic as she starts to throw in additional ones. Let's get into it. Aetheric Polyominoid is the main mechanic of this fight, used a good dozen times before she falls. What this does is places four needles into the arena. These radiate AoEs into the surrounding squares. You can tell which AoE belongs to each needle by their proximity and the pulsing waves of the AoEs. They radiate from the needles, the wave starting from the needle. These AoEs are contained within each square. They cannot go beyond the square. Any square without an AoE indicator is safe, despite what the AoE shape may make you believe. Next is the difficult to pronounce Choros Ixo. She will place her hands and snake wings to her sides or in front and behind her. Black orbs of energy will appear and then explode into large 90 degree cones. Pay attention for any of these tells and be where she is not pointing AoEs. She will use both directions, performing the action three times total for the tutorial. Hemetheos' Dark 4 is a basic raid-wide attack, but it hurts decently, a good 40k like the previous fight. Mitigate and heal up as needed. Transmission will tether onto four random players, and then cast again to tether onto the other four. This places a short Parasite debuff on everyone. When the timer runs out, with a loud warning of a countdown appearing over everyone's heads, the Parasite will take over. You will be stunned and shoot a thin conal AoE across the arena in the direction you are facing. To prevent yourself from hitting other players, simply turn to look to the outside of the arena. No need to move away from the boss, just a quick turnaround will do. Pay attention to the debuff timer or the loud countdown overhead and turn at the end. Heal up the tanks for any damages they took as Synergy is next. This hits both tanks, or the highest enemy player if a tank is dead, and explodes into an AoE. They must be loosely spread and make sure not to hit other players. Synergy doesn't hit too hard, but leaves a lasting dot that you cannot remove with Esuna. It lasts a few seconds into the next etheric polyominoid. This polyominoid is different though, as all future ones she will now be combining other attacks in. This first one is Choros Ixo. Some squares that would normally be safe are now unsafe due to her added skills. From this point forward, be ready to move to the other safe square of a needle for dodging her other AoEs. Strophe Ixo has her pointing her wings in front and behind her, often turning to face a random player before starting the cast. These are much smaller 45 degree angle cones, but she will also spin 45 degrees in the indicated direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. It will go off 8 times for a full 360 degree spin. The AoEs will also not overlap as she spins, making a perfect circle. Her next new trick is to combine transmission with more mechanics. All 8 players will be marked, but there will be 2 sets of timers. Who gets the short or long timer is random. She will cast Choros Ixo as the first set of timers are running out. Make sure to move out of the way of the AoE for before the Parasite takes over, and stay next to the boss so you don't get cleaved by someone else's cone. More significant an addition is the second set of timers coming with a new attack, Dark Ashes. This gives all players a decently sized AoE around them. Spread out and let the players with timers over their heads have the right away. Adjust around them, because they need to make sure they are facing outwards. If you're going to move away from the boss for any reason, this would be the time, just to ensure your parasite is facing outwards. Be sure to also heal anyone who needs it and mitigate the damage if you can. Dark Ashes will do a good chunk of damage even when done correctly. She will perform a few more attacks before shifting into phase 2. This is marked by her speaking with a new cast, Ethereal Exchange. This is followed by Polyominoid Sigma, which is identical to Ethereal Polyominoid. The difference now is that each needle will have a partner. This partner is designated by them being tethered together. The needles will swap places after a few seconds. 
that orientation will be consistent between both locations. If a needle is radiating an AoE to the top left and bottom right of it before moving, it will be affecting the same panels but from a new position. This first pattern best shows this as the tethered needles are opposites. From their starting locations, every panel that seems dangerous is actually a safe spot after the swap. She will repeat the skills, but now with the possibility of needles having all four squares around them being dangerous. Start from one of these needles, move to where a safe spot will be after the needles trade places. Note that needles can also be tethered diagonally, not always next to each other. From here, mechanics will all repeat, but often combine together. Polyominoid Sigma with Choros Ixo is now three full needles with a single needle of two AoEs. Only one of the two safe squares will be safe from the Choros Ixo, depending on which direction she aims them. Pick one of the two safe squares and move instantly if you chose wrong. Polyominoid Sigma with Strophe Ixo will have two needles that hit all four squares. You can attempt to bait the Strophe by standing where the four AoE needles will be, then dodge to where a safe square will be. Otherwise, you will have to pick a safe spot and then react to where she turns to point her first AoE. The needles go off before she begins to spin, so you'll have plenty of room to start running around. Polyominoid Sigma with Dark Ashes, you can fit four players into a single safe square, so long as all neighboring squares are empty of players. There are many safe spots though, so spread out for a much safer time. Overall, it's not too bad. Keep it up and hegemony will fall. You have to get used to watching for two separate attacks at once. But the attacks have enough tells that if you don't tunnel vision, you should be able to react with time to spare. You're going to need that extra time for the next fight. Thank you for watching this guide on Abyssos, the Sixth Circle. Leave a like, comment, sub, all that stuff. Follow my socials link below and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care and may the power of Ananid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon al -Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sadia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Fraser97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for the support, and see you for the next one.